Welcome to this first session in our marriage preparation course. Let's start by saying a prayer together. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are our creator. You know us better than anyone else. You brought us together and you have promised that you have plans and a purpose for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Remind us that you are the center of our relationship and that you are the one who watches over our future. May we look to you for wisdom and guidance. May your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. The first book of Corinthians and chapter 13 is often referred to as the love chapter. So let's listen to that now. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain. Faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. got married at a local church. It was a great day. I was a bridesmaid and got to wear an amazing one like dress. But I want to find out what the ceremony really meant and why marriage is important for Christians like my mum. We wanted to show our commitment in front of God, our friends and family. Were you nervous before the wedding? I was nervous. I was nervous. He was nervous. I was nervous. You, you keep me waiting for 25 minutes. Didn't make me nervous at all. <laughs> what was your favourite part about the wedding? Walking down the aisle together. Yeah, yeah, I think that on the way out. I think that was nice actually being because we were separate to begin with and then we combined and walked down the aisle ourselves. So yeah, I enjoyed that. This is the church where my mum got married. Traditionally the bride walks up the aisle to meet the groom, who is waiting with the vicar and the best man.
My name is Penny Sayer. I am the vicar here at St Albans Church in Dagenham. The vicar welcomes everyone. We say a prayer and sing a hymn. In the presence of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we have come together to witness the marriage of David and Katrina. Why is it important for Christians to get married? Christians look to the Bible as their sort of the, the text that teaches them how to do things. And if you remember, right at the beginning of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, God creates Adam, and Adam is very lonely, so God creates Eve to be a partner and, and a helpmate and to go through life together. So that's really the foundation of family life, that a man and a woman come together uh, and they live their lives faithfully together. After the prayers, the vicar stands here and tells us a little bit about what marriage is. It enriches society and strengthens community. No one should enter into it lightly or selfishly, but reverently and responsibly in the sight of Almighty God. I know usually brides get married in white, but my mum got married in red. Does that matter? That doesn't matter at all. The most important thing is that you have the man and the woman who want to be married and you have two witnesses. So actually all you need is five people, minimum. But you had a, a big family wedding, didn't you, with lots and lots of people. After that, there is a Bible reading. My uncle read a passage which talk, talks about how people should behave when they're in love and how they should treat each other. Wives, understand and support your husbands by submitting to them in ways that honour the master. Husbands, go all out and love your wives. Don't take advantage of them. Then the vicar gives a sermon. Penny talks about love and marriage. Marriage is a gift from God to all of us. Couples are intended to find delight in each other. Now we move on to the really exciting bit. The vicar turns to the couple and asks them to hold hands and vow that they love each other and will look after each other. I, David Vincent Tumber. Take you, Katrina Ann Emerson. Take you, Katrina Ann Emerson. To be my wife. To be my wife. I, Katrina Ann Emerson. Take you, David Vincent Tumber. Take you, David Vincent Tumber. To be my husband. To be my husband. Why do Christians use wedding rings? Just because it's traditional, you don't have to have wedding rings. Um, and sometimes just the bride will have a ring, not the groom. Um, it's quite symbolic because it goes round and round and round forever, so it's a sign of everlasting love. Heavenly Father, by your blessing, let these rings be to David and Katrina, a symbol of an ending love and faithfulness. Katrina, I give you this ring. Katrina, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. They are pronounced husband and wife, and they normally kiss. In the presence of God and before this congregation, David and Katrina have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of rings. When the ceremony is over, family and friends got together to have a party. Often speeches are made and there was a wedding cake. But today I've learnt that the most important thing is that God is there too, blessing the couple and their love for each other. For me it's great because I have an even bigger family. In this session, I want to briefly explore the relationship between faith and marriage. Now, a faith in God fundamentally means a relationship with him. Relationships start with us knowing about someone or, as far as God is concerned, having heard of him. That often starts with a realisation that there is more to life. And if we accept that there is such a power which we will call God, then we should start to know something about it. So, 
we move on to finding out about God. And reading the Bible is a good way to find out what God is like. Then we need to move on further because we have to respond to him. We must either reject him or accept God into our life through Jesus. And that's when we start to experience a close relationship. Then we can say that we know the person, God. This is similar, of course, to a relationship in marriage where we need to get to know each other and give ourselves to each other so we can have a close and honest relationship. We then move on to trust, because if we have a relationship with God, then we also say we have a trust in God. What does this mean? Well, it means that we start to depend on him. And as we learn to depend on him more and more, as our relationship grows, we start to have a confidence in him. That confidence is because we know we can depend on him. There is a verse in Proverbs chapter 3 that says, If you want favour with both God and man, and a reputation for good judgment and common sense, then trust the Lord completely in everything you do. And surely that is also true in a marriage relationship. We must trust each other. We must depend on each other. Of course, that's not easy because we humans tend to be independent. But the more we depend on our partner, the more we have a confidence in them and them in us. A confidence in a mutual trust. Another verse in the Bible says faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We talk about taking a step of faith with each other and that's also true with a faith in God. We need to build a faith in God through a relationship and through trust and then we say we have a faith. In marriage, we need to build a faith in each other through a close relationship that has a mutual trust and a shared confidence in what we hope for, both individually and together. There needs to be a firm foundation of a true, open and close relationship built on trust and confidence in each other. Now I ask you to pause the video and to talk about what you've heard and jot down maybe what you feel would be beneficial to you as an individual and also as a couple. Restart the video when you're ready to go on. To finish this session, let's share together the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Thank you for looking at this video and taking part. If you would like to email Mike just to confirm that you finished this particular session and give us any feedback, we would be very grateful. Thank you and God bless you.